Well, John. Good afternoon. How are you? Good. Call one, and we'll call the we'll call this meeting to order. And uh, Mr. Levis, are you going to do the honors of the roll call? Yes. Um, Luke Murray here. Alita Hall. <laughs> Amy Anzalone here. Don Cowart here. Amy, I always pronounce your last name wrong. I apologize. Um, Ann Dixon. Here. Dave D'Agostino. I am here. All right. Christine Kennedy. Kimberly Shockley. Here. All right. Uh, Rob Levesque. Here. Joe Lucian. Here. Sarah Mangiarelli. I don't know if Sarah's going to be joining us. Okay. Jason Martin. Here. Ms. Catherine Patno. I'm here. John Price. Here. And Wesley Lee Restall. I know I saw here. him. Here. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, got a good showing tonight. I know it's tough. Uh, many of you, I know council had a meeting last night. Um, many other people have meetings throughout the week. I'm on uh, track to have four night meetings this week. So it's it's good to see everybody and appreciate the time. Um, so we don't have any minutes to approve this week, so we will table that um, since we have nothing. We'll have three um, sets next meeting, though. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll have to uh, get caught up. Um, the schedule check, I'm actually going to table that as well, only because we're in flux with finalizing the schedule because a lot of it has to do with the information and communication. Um, so I think until we can settle the schedule down a little bit more, um, we'll continue to stay on track. I do anticipate having these meetings every two weeks and staying on track with the Tuesdays. I think that's good practice. Um, I'm just bringing Rick in. Um, but we will um, we'll stay, stay with the meetings on the Tuesdays. I expect to have the schedule ironed out within the month to take what Alita had done, plug in some more firm dates. One thing that we do need to do, and this goes to Alita, is um, create a schedule for council to give them dates that we want to be on for their agendas and tie that into the schedule. So you had built some of that in, and I need to get with you on a separate schedule that would be a concise schedule for Council President Dixon to, to take back and, and slot us in in advance. So. Um, so that's that. Um, I'll move on to the chairman's report. Um, I'm going to give some updates on what's been happening in the background. Anybody feel free to raise your hand, ask me questions as I go through these individual items. Um, certainly welcome any input or questions that you have. Um, so as far as coordination with council, um, this is going to be continuing to be very important moving forward. Our stage two is now in. Um, while we're waiting on Ride to give us some answers back, and, and Phil's going to be working on providing any addenda that they require, um, our role is really transitioning into, as we've said before, public outreach, but also communicating um, with the town council and our elected officials on what's going on and to determine if we're going to be moving with some sort of bond effort. Um, I briefed council last night, and we have two members here. Um, that can certainly speak to that. Um, and if actually, if, if Ms. Dixon, if you would want to speak to it, just how you felt like the update went and feel that like it was beneficial. Um, you're always very thorough, Luke, um, and concise. Um, we appreciate um, your slide programs and the information you present, um, but we're going to have to, you know, see how things go and, and really determine and understand what ride will come back to you with for an offer, so to speak. Councilwoman Shockley, you wanna throw in any comment and your thoughts on how, the, or, or things that we could be doing better even in the updates um, too? Yeah, I thought the update was strong. I think um, it was clear last night that Lisa Mills has to really start getting looped into these conversations. Um, and it sounds like um, bond council is gonna be a really important factor. Um, I like that Lisa had done this already in Portsmouth, I think she was in. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of has an understanding of how the process goes. But I do think people, 
you know, I think the council has a positive outlook on the project, but <clears throat> we want to make sure that we get that input from our finance director and bond council is, is what the take I got at, at the end of the meeting. Yeah, there's always a but. Um, and, and we appreciate council entertaining us and making sure that we, we remain on the schedule. You entertain us, Luke. <laughs> I try. Um, I, I do think there was just a little shock factor when we saw the number for the bond. Uh, I won't you know, steal your thunder this evening. Um, so we'll let it go at that. But it was a little bit of a shock for people when they saw the number. Yeah, well, so I mean, know. Was, you know, the stage two report, we went in with the stage two at a little higher number. It was 89 million. Um, but that's not far off of where the 85 we've been talking, I think, for a while now. Yeah. Um, it was higher a little bit on purpose. We know that Ride is likely to give us a haircut. Um, that was a known from the beginning. And as, as Joe DeSilva had said, you know, give me a reason. I need something to, he has to work his process. We have to help him work his process. So in doing that, predicting that we, it's necessary that we take a haircut on some of our budget, we, we put in some additional flexibility I'd say into our budget. Um, fully expecting that we're likely to go more forward with an $85 million ask. It's still a lot of money, right? Um, but I don't, I think for the past couple of months, we've been having this discussion of, of that's, that's the number, right? That's what we feel the numbers should be. What I said to council last night, and I'll reiterate, is that, you know, where I sit, Luke Murray sits as, a, as the building committee chair, I can't determine this town's financial side right? Does this fit into the overall puzzle? And that's where we have to have pretty quick discussions on does it fit into the overall puzzle? We've done a lot of work. You've done a lot of work in getting this to this point. But we need to now plug this in. And I, I felt like we did have some of these earlier conversations with Steve Masseroni, who's the, from PFM, the town's financial advisor, about generalities of whether the town could go to bond. Um, but we need to hardline that, and then the council needs to, you know, and do their due diligence to determine is it prudent to go forward at this time. Um, that's for them to determine. We have to, I think, if it's a building committee, give them every reason to move forward, um, meaning reaching out to the public, uh, providing the political will, and then also providing good information about our project so the numbers are correct. And, and our new finance director can plug those in. You know? so, um, so to your point, Ms. Shockley, yes, I mean, I think, I think there's a lot of work to be done. And uh, I, we kind of got in the weeds a little bit last night, um, talking about bands and you know, how we would finance the project and all this, and you tend to get in the weeds. The truth is some of this has to happen behind the scenes with the financial planning. And the real, you know, uh, the answer we'd like to get from the town is, Yes, we're capable of doing it. It's at the will of the people whether they want to do it. And then we as a building committee and as a community need to step up and help them, you know, explain the case of why now. Yeah, I mean, I think the council overall, you know, I think it's only prudent to make sure we have that before we put it in front of the voters is the, yeah, the town, the town can do this if you choose to. Um, and then I think our desire, and I don't speak for the council, I'm just saying, it's just a feel I get, not a conversation I've had. Um, we would like the voters to decide. Yeah. Anybody have any questions or comments, concerns about that particular item, coordination? Um, I also wanna let you know that I, I did ask um, Council President Dixon, which she obliged, and, and also Ch Chairwoman Patnode, to assemble a meeting of elected leader leadership, including myself um, in, in, the, in the room uh, with Ms. Patno and Ms. Dixon, um, Ms. Ludwig, the town administration leaders, including uh, Superintendent Levis and town manager Wazika to discuss kind of rules of engagement going forward as far as this particular effort is concerned. And then also have a frank discussion on some of these issues, right, behind the scenes of, you know, the financials, how does this fit in the big picture, kind of get everyone's thoughts on the table um, to start that dialogue at a leadership level. So we can, I think that's important. 
that, that we kind of come out with a game plan or at least thinking about. Um, so I'll certainly report back out of that. Um, I'm hoping it's productive. Um, my hope out of that meeting is also to set the tone that we do need to meet with the town's financial advisor again, that we will need to meet with the town's bond council again to at, at least look at the pathway forward should we decide to go forward, because we can't wait. We're in the March. We'll likely hear from Riot in, Phil, correct me if I'm wrong, late April, May, right? And then there's enabling legislation that needs to be done if we move to bond. I have spoken with um, one representative, Tom Norey. He's on board with sponsoring that legislation. He has children in the system, very supportive of our effort. And should the council choose to move forward, he'd be glad to support it. And I'm sure we have more than just him that would be glad to support and sponsor that legislation. So I'm not concerned there at a state level that we have any blockage. Any, anything on that before I move on? No? Look, I got one, one quick question. Go ahead. It's more to Phil. I guess, how do we, like where are we compared to other communities with what happened last night? Like are we, where stage two's submitted, getting ready to be approved, hopefully going to stage three. Has this, because I watched the meeting last night, I heard what was said. So is this a common practice at this point? Or are we already too far? Not, not that we're too far, but are we, we down the road, or are we down the road a little farther than say other communities where maybe that conversation would have happened say three months ago, four months ago at, at the end of stage one? So I, I have to say, I did not listen to the meeting last night. So I don't know what was said. I'm inferring from the discussion that there may have been, I wouldn't say uh, resistance, but maybe some challenges to the process. Um, that's not uncommon. I have seen that in other municipalities recently that were successful in passing the bond vote. Um, it's best to present a united front as soon as possible so that the voters have confidence in the project moving forward. Um, but uh, some, some internal conflict is not uncommon. It's best resolved quickly so that, like I said, you present a united front. Yeah, yeah and Rob, I would say that Keep in mind that we have a brand new finance director on the town side. She's just getting her head wrapped around the financials as a whole. She didn't have the depth of knowledge that John probably had at, at a certain point, understanding the big picture. So I think some of it was sort of thinking out loud on her part during her presentation, which I think that's part of the ground rules is I think it's dangerous sometimes to think out loud in these scenarios because it has a real impact, right? Um, words matter. And so if we're gonna talk about that stuff and thinking about, well, do we have the ability? Do we not have the ability? Well, that's best discussed probably behind the scenes, right? Um, True. The numbers and, and displaying that in public shows that we're, we're not sure. We're, we're unsure of ourselves and we haven't worked it out. When the truth is we haven't worked it out because we haven't fully gotten there yet. But some of these discussions did happen. Unfortunately, they happened with a different finance director. So I need to get Ms. Mills up to speed. Um, the town manager needs to get her up to speed. And I think we can start working together in a collaborative fashion. So I wouldn't get too spooked about last night. I think there was some healthy conversation there. And, and I think that there's definitely pathways to move forward and, you know. Yeah, I, I understand. Just we're, we're getting ready to, you know, hire an OPM and then boom, can the town afford this? It's like, you know, that's, that's when, when I, I'm like, we're already, we're, we're down the road here. We're, we're, <laughs> we're down, we're in the rabbit hole, so to speak, in my opinion, we're, we're ready to go. Yeah. And, it, and it's important that we show that we're ready to go. You know, I empathize because, you know, we've all put a lot of time and energy into this effort, right? Um, there are some towns, work a good example, I've mentioned this before, where they put in a ton of time for no reason whatsoever. They just, after stage two, the council said no. And it dead ended the project for a year. 
and they had to start all over again. So um, that's not to say that it'll happen, but we always knew that risk from the get-go, right? There, there's no guarantees that the council would ever, I don't care if it's $2, you ever go to bond. Um, it's just, you know, we need to work it out and we need, you know, we've been united, we'll continue to be united in, in moving forward. Thank Ms. you. Um, also just wanted to point out that last night was the first time that our new finance director had put the town's financials in front of the council. Um, so it was almost the conversation that led up to this one that caused more questions. I think um, only because she was talking about an overall picture of um, the town's bonds and pension liabilities. And um, so just having had that discussion as occurring right before the discussion about the school bond, um, I think led to a deeper dive in the discussion than maybe there would have been otherwise. Um, but everyone, she seemed really open to just being able to have that conversation with Steve and with you, Luke, and with the other um, you know, president and vice president of the town council and school committee. So her okay. input, I think, is going to actually be helpful to the process. Yeah, I agree. And, and I, I'm looking forward to it. So and, uh, go ahead, Lee. Um, may I suggest that the approach might be to get uh, Lisa Mills uh, on your side with the question, how do we make this work? Because um, she appears almost brilliant when it comes to budgets and where the town stands right now. And she's looking for ideas to improve the condition of the town with its budget. And so if she's on our side and we're working together for this common cause, it's it's quite possible it'll all go together well and and nobody's nobody's angry with anybody else nobody's pointing fingers we're all working together well i thanks for the input lee i mean i ultimately i feel like the numbers she's a number of person the numbers will matter and and that's what we need to keep it to right i've said it to this point like we've never I wanted to hold back some of the numbers early on because I wanted to focus on the design, but we always knew the numbers in the background, right? And you know, we've also done a lot of work with the numbers beyond the meetings with Steve Masseroni and Bond Council and talking about this with Council. So we're gonna have that sort of debate, but it's gonna be a bit numbers based, right? What worked um, and why? What, you know, does, why should the town buy into this, you know, in a rebuilding effort as opposed to, you know, stripping the bolts off the wheels again and and hoping to limp down the road you know that's that's the way i frame it right um we need to sort of walk into chew gum everyone has debt i have debt i don't own this house the bank owns the house that doesn't mean i don't replace the roof on it right so that's that's sort of my perspective on things you know i don't let my house go into disarray just because i have debt um, the town's always going to have some level and that's the discussion what level is bearable so We'll continue to have that. I'm looking forward to the leadership meeting uh, and, and I'll, I will report back to you on, on what comes of that. So, uh, I'm gonna move on to the public outreach discuss discussion. So on Bill Friday, it was, or Lita, um, we had a meeting with the Newport Building Committee who's been successful in their bond effort. Um, and Phil, you wanna give a quick overview of, of what their makeup is and who they are? Sure. So um, similar to you, they set up a building committee and, and the submitted the stage two. Stage two is approved. And then they transitioned to this uh, bond sales and communications effort. And uh, I asked them if they would speak with the folks from Coventry because uh, I see uh, that maybe you shared some similar challenges and they were successful and I wanted them to convey the lessons learned to Luke and Alita. And I don't wanna oversimplify it, but the strategy is, is two-pronged approach. One is fact-based that is um, integrated into all the messaging that the school department does either on their website, 
or on materials that are posted around the school, uh, materials that are delivered to students and, and parents and teachers. And there's a way to present all of the fact-based information that does not start to influence bond voting uh, persuasion. And we, we help with that. We craft the, the message for that, and then you distribute it. The second part is the opposite of that. That is the, for lack of a better word, I'll call it the, the, the advertising part, the, the get out the yes vote part. And that's where all the materials are slanted to the message that you want, which is you need to vote yes for this bond vote. Look the condition of our schools. Look at the opportunities we have. That is all the subjective part. And that is done best through um, a, a bond uh, committee. I don't know, the, I forget the exact word, Luke, but it's not a political action committee. It's a bond initiative uh, group. And that part is heavily invested in social media and in messaging. So we asked them to walk us through what they did basically, you know, three months before, uh, eight weeks before, six weeks, three, two weeks before the bond vote. And they have a lot of information that they're willing to share with Luke and the strategies and the methods that they found successful, Instagram and Facebook and, and uh, some some paid advertisement. They also um, mentioned the uh, amount of money that they were able to raise and spend. And Luke, I think it was around sixteen thousand dollars they raised and spent. And that was on the the paid advertising part, the get out the yes vote part. Um, like I said, the factual part that stayed on the school side was just that all factual information uh, that was presented. They did um, suggest strongly that you get a couple people that are heavily invested in the community, um, ones that like to you know, post things to Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. So I think that's the clear, the simplest message is um, a two-part approach. One part is very factual and clear the other part is a lot more creative and subjective and requires some social media presence. And uh, I'll expound a little bit. I thought it was interesting because one of the members, so these were all members of the building committee. One particular member was a community member that really led the charge on the bond, get out the yes. The there was two that were, and Phil, correct me, only one was on the school committee, correct? Oh, both of them were. So two people from the school committee also participated, but they, they were very clear on that. What they put on the school site where it had to be vetted, just, just the facts, because you can't be you know, pushing bond votes on a school website. Um, so that was their, their first approach was just you know, general information on the site. The second, which was the building committee member, the community member who was out there leading the charge, sounds like she did a lot of legwork. I don't know what she does for work, but she must have had a lot of time outside of work because there was a ton of work. They did raise 16,000. Most of that went to mailers um, that they put out. They're very heavily invested in mailers that went out. Um, they had a volunteer set up the website and kind of just did a, a, you know, just a lot of social media presence. presence. And, um, you know, that was, that was good for them. I, I you know, I, I think there are a lot of lessons learned um, from that discussion. Uh, one of the things is that we had been talking about, well, do we do a pack? Do we set it up? What they did was they set it up as a corporation. And under the finance laws, you can aggregate, if it's a bond initiative, a lot more money without having to get into specific reporting. That may not seem big, but when you're receiving donations, let's say in a political campaign, some of us who know, anything over $100 needs to be reported and you have to provide the person's work, specific information. Some people don't love that. So on a bond initiative, you can aggregate those, those donations up to, I think it's a value of $1,800. 
And so that worthy, I think, of discussion because it's it's outside. You know, the other thing is a pact just has a bad connotation. I think, in my mind, it does, right? You know, the political action committees are like these greasy things that fund campaigns, whereas a bond initiative sounds softer and it's, you know, it's got a it's got a single purpose. So I thought that was valuable information as well. Um, Alita, did you want to chime in on anything I'm missing here? Um, you were in it on the meeting as well. Feel free. No, I feel like you guys hit the highlights. I mean, it was some good direction. If we wind up in, on that path, even no matter where we are with communications, I think they had some good lessons learned. I have a page and a half of notes. I'm sure Luke has just as many. So when we get rolling, I'm sure we'll go steal from some of their best practices and, and hope they are implemented successfully for us. I think that the big takeaways are, you know, they ramped up the effort. We've already talked about this. They ramped up as the bond came. They did some some direct outreach. They were very limited by COVID. That was right in the middle of when COVID hit and they, they really couldn't do anything. We actually may be in a better situation depending on how things trend, but it seems to be trending in the positive. Where we might be actually go out and have some physical contact with people or at least be able to to pass out literature and have some of that face to face. So I think uh, we'll be in a much improved scenario where they would have liked to have done that. They just didn't have the possibility or the ability to do it. So um, there were some good takeaways, like, like Alita said, we'll, we'll kind of consolidate the lessons learned and, and incorporate them moving forward. But I thought it was healthy and Phil, thanks for setting that up. Um, does anybody have any questions with regards to sort of what we outlaid? specifically. And, and just to clarify, Phil, what was the amount that they had gotten? I think it was around 106 million. I think, we, uh, I think the submission was 105 and ride came back at 98.9. Okay. So that gives you an example too of, of their sustained cut from ride and then their success. And they're, they're very, very proud that their bond vote happened to a majority of people. It was in the 70th 70 percentile that I think it was 77 percent Phil is that right that that voted for it so they're very proud that they were able to pull that vote out and really get it going so um so hopefully we can do the same if and when we get there um I wanted to give you a brief update on hiring of an information specialist so I haven't told all of you this I think I've told maybe Alita the co-chair and whatnot so I did reach out to Chris Horn who is the person that many of us had met with months ago about communications and that kind of got tabled because we were figuring out finances, how to pay for it. And we kind of wrapped up in the stage two. Um, effectually, he said he'll pass on, on the project. He, he's no longer interested. I think he's got other things going on. And unfortunately, you know, he, we won't be able to retain him for his services. So knowing that, um, that the committee as a whole felt it important to have somebody in charge of this effort, which I also believe. Um, I reached out to one particular company and Alita actually reached out to another individual who's been brought up before um, that, and actually Rob had brought this particular individual up to uh, Shelly. Um, managed to reach out to her. She, she's a Coventry resident. Um, Shelly runs a marketing firm and Alita will fill you in on, on her background. Um, I also reached out to somebody that I knew who's in this realm, um, a company called Eleven. They had done the, the bond, $250 million bond initiative originally a couple of years ago. They do a lot of video marketing, web marketing, and other things. I happen to know them. I went to, uh, I went to school in my MPA with a member who works there. So I thought, I thought of him. I called him up. I said, listen, we just had... Uh, an opportunity um, get passed over. I know you do this type of work. So he did send me a proposal and some scope for consideration. At the same time, Alita spoke with Shelly today. So I think that we have a couple options available. We need to kind of dig in a little bit more. Alita, do you want to talk a little bit about Shelly and her background? Yeah, so when I met Shelly was five, six years ago, she was um, she used to work at Gilbane's internal marketing group, Global Sales and Marketing. And um, she was there for many years. She actually assisted us in that role when, you know, when we went out to, um, to communities, everybody didn't always hire a specialist like Chris. So we sometimes just assisted the owner in our role as CM and um, her team was a big part of that effort. 
So that's the background she's in. She um, left a few years ago and opened up her own marketing company. So she's kind of been working in the same vein um, in that she's been in and out of construction and then other areas as well, but she still kind of kept her feet wet on this side of the table. So um, she has a lot of history doing these types of projects for school, um, for school moving forward. And um, similar to um, the gentleman Luke spoke with, she's gonna put together a proposal, itemized scope in a list. Um, it was a good conversation. Like she's excited about it as a Coventry resident. She's like, yeah, I really want it to happen. And you know, she's on that page, which is a good thing as well. Living here, we got one extra vote. And then um, we'll go forward from there. Once we get her proposal this week, we'll go through them and see where it leads. So I'm more than willing to, you know, we each have websites. Um, they can provide credentials that we can certainly blast out to the committee by email. You can check them out and provide any feedback, your thoughts, or any specific questions you'd like us to ask of them. Um, and then, you know, we'll discuss the next steps forward on, you know, whether we bring them in individually and, and have the committee at least ask some questions or I'll have to be talking to the superintendent and, and Lita about that on how we proceed. But we wanted to at least start tethering out some other options. Um, we had to kind of pivot after Chris decided to, and it took a little bit for Chris to get back to me. So I apologize, but, um, you know, we had to pivot and find other options. There's other options certainly out there. Um, I know that we want to find somebody who's a good fit for the project and that can kind of take the torch. Um, that doesn't mean we can't use some of what Cranston and Newport also did, um, which is, you know, recruiting parents to take over certain roles in this process, especially to get out the yes vote. I think it's going to be critical that we start recruiting some parents, engaged community members. And that's a discussion that, you know, I'm also willing to have with any members who know somebody who would be a good fit. Um, and that doesn't mean they have to lead the charge and, and stampede over the hill. That just means that are they willing to maybe donate some time to sit out in front of a supermarket for a couple hours and hand out literature and material? Are they willing to do some social media? Are they, do they have a web background? Maybe they could help contribute there. So if you know of anybody who might be a good fit, who's an engaged community member, I think you need to look at your inner circles right here and see who might be available or willing. Um, and I'm gonna be doing the same. Um, and I also owe Don Coward a call because he had been working on a kind of a short list of some people he thought. Um, one thought that came to mind is also just reaching out to the individual PTAs who are already engaged and seeing if anybody in those community groups would be interested. Um, I don't know how others feel about that. Um, does anybody have any thoughts? No? <laughs> Work with me, people. No, uh, I think the more people we can have speak out positively about it in the community, the better. But going along with that professional person or agency um, to really put a nice package together for why this is necessary. Superintendent Levitt? Yeah, I, I, I agree with. Uh... Ms. Shockley about, you know, I think we all agree that we need that professional communication person, but is it appropriate to reach out to the community, uh, reach out to the school department? Um, you know, we could even reach out through, you know, through the town, uh, you know, I, I see the town council last night, you know, Dr. Dixon was talking about, you know, require, you know, opportunities to work on different boards is, in, again, I'm not, you know, I'm not speaking for the council, I just asking, is it appropriate for us to reach out and ask for individuals that are interested um, through both of our avenues to be on you know, some type of public relations or how we want to frame it, but we could easily just do that. I think right now we're looking for volunteers, right? Um, right. Exactly, volunteers, yeah. So they can certainly say no, we're just looking for people who are interested in contributing to the building effort. Um, what the capacity is, I don't know. You know, what we'll do is we'll That'll also be up to whoever we hire. And that person, you know, will come up. I would expect that they'll come up with a task list, a laundry list of potential roles and duties that need to be absorbed by community members and other members who want to step up. So, um, but it would be good to have capacity. Uh, Council President Dixon. Um, good evening. I think it's very important to include as many people as possible and engage as many people as possible in the community. 
but I think that there needs to be some consideration of what are some of the targeted groups that you want to actually get involved. So you might decide that um, targeted groups who could help spread the word effectively might be some of the PTO presidents. So you might want to look for volunteers within that group because then they can spread the word within that particular group. Or you might want to approach a, a Rotary or Knights of Columbus and ask for volunteers within that and hope that they would also spread the, the notice or the information within that particular group. So I think that's some careful consideration of who are the targeted groups who could be the most influential in a community uh, needs to be considered um, and see what, what kind of volunteers you can get from them and then also supplement that with other com community members who want to be involved. Good point. Uh, Don? Yeah, and to, go, to kind of go along with that, I think with some tight script, scripting and messaging so that we make sure everybody who's communicating is communicating the same message the same way so that everybody's hearing a consistent message because the, the slippery slope of getting lots of people involved, which I am not against, is that people start messaging their own message and we get off the, the, the point we're trying to make. So I think it would be important to get people involved, but also people that would stay on message, stay on point and be able to give them um, the, all the right talking points to be able to communicate. The other thing I was thinking about is when, when it comes time to go to like events, whether it's open house or uh, athletic events or you know whatever events that we go to to set up a table and share literature that we partner up people from the building committee with people in the community so that they see that it's um, a partnership and that we can kind of work together to make sure that everybody's um, getting the right information the same way at the same time. Good point. Bill? It, the only thing I want to remind everybody, and you'll figure this out on your own again a couple times, this is a special election. So you really only want to focus on those people that vote, and you really want to want to focus on those people that vote that will vote yes. So my only advice is don't waste time on people that don't vote. Don't waste time on people that already think no, because all you need is the yes votes. And keep in mind, it's going to be a special election. So... They, you have to give them a reason to come out to vote yes. It, it may help narrow your focus a little bit on who you're trying to get. Right. And, and it's a good point. I, I mean, it's hard to say, right? I mean, when you run a political campaign, it's the same way. They, they tell you go to certain houses, right? Because that person doesn't vote, but that person does. You go to that house. And it's very hard as a candidate to do because, you know, you feel like you have to serve everybody. But there is a, there is a point to be taken. Um, on the flip side of that, I would say that we also, um, we want the community buy-in as a whole, right? So there's a two kind of a two-pronged approach, get out the yes to the people we want, but also education to the people who may not vote, but are gonna be impacted. Um, you certainly, you know, but it's good point taken, Phil. Um, so all good comments. I think what that's leading me to, Don, did you have something? Just one last piece. Um, yeah. There, there is some apathy in our community because we've seen the the voting numbers go down a lot. You know, even a court, during the course of this year, with each bond, we saw fewer and fewer co people coming out. So I think we do need to build excitement, not only to get the people to vote yes, but just to get more people to vote because I think there's a little bit of apathy right now. And for a special election, it's really hard to get people out because there's nothing else on the ticket. So. It's, it's really going to be about motivating people to leave their house and go vote for something that is important. Yeah, it's going to be super critical to get that person on board. And with that, you know, I, I, I would expect that the person in charge is going to direct traffic, come up with that subtask list, kind of point us in the right direction, right? Be that person. I would love for somebody from the community to, to work in lockstep with that PR person. So that way we have a community member who's kind of working in parallel, they're not doing the daily lifting, our PR person's doing that. But is really there as, as the local community leader who's working in lockstep. So we kind of have somebody at the same level of distributing information, almost like a chairperson. Um, and it'd be great to have that because we're not having that same structure as like Newport or Cranston, but that doesn't mean we can't have that, that sort of parallel structure that goes along with it. That somebody's sort of directing traffic um, directly with the, the town member or the, or the PR chairman. Um, so, Bill? 
I, I just thought of this. Someone had mentioned it earlier about hiring the OPM. What, what role do you think the OPM will have in this communications effort, if any? Have you, have you guys thought about that at all? Well, that's, that's going to lead into our next agenda item. So I think it's a good transition as any. Um, so so um, unless, do other people have any questions or comments on this particular agenda item, which was my chairman's report? All right. Um, oh, I see a hand up. Who is it? Uh, Say more. Oh, wait, it's you. Sorry. Okay. So I think one of the important things that we should identify is why do we want to spend this money? Why do we need it? And we need to list the items that are a real problem. Uh, the idea that we are paying somebody to go in on the weekends and the holidays to empty the dehumidifiers in the middle school is it's just money wasted, you know, and, and we need to we need to really look at those things. Why? Why do we need it? And if we list those things, people will begin to understand why we want to accomplish it. And the wonderful uh, job that Phil has done putting together a facility that will really make the learning experience important to the Coventry students. So that that's my take on it is is to figure out how do we how do we uh, how do we how do we tell them why we need it. And and that's something I think you're gonna have to hold until we get that person in place, Lee. You know, like uh, really the the. The point on the agenda was about the, the hiring of the specialist and, you know, what are we going to do to kind of coordinate that person into the position. So once we set that up, and if and I'd welcome you to take a more active role uh, in the, you know, the PR campaign or, or working in unison with our PR person on your ideas. Um, so you hire him, I'll text him. Or, <laughs> uh, so, there you go. Okay, excellent. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next uh, agenda item, which is discussion of owner's project manager procurement on uh, the RFP review. So this goes in to what you were saying, Phil, about you know, what's the role of the OPM. And um, you know, I'll let Alita speak to this a little bit because she's been the primary lead on, on putting together the RFP. Oh, great, thanks, Luke. I didn't even study. Oh. Um, <laughs> I haven't looked at that OPM RFP in a while, but I know there is within the, um, within the proposal, there is a section that we kind of detail some of the, the assistance that we would want on the communications effort and um, having it put out. So in general, I mean, it could go either way. We've done it where you could either hire, you could actually hire this person to work directly under the OPM or, um, like, or you could hire them as a building committee to work side by side. But I mean, even once they get on board, I'm not sure who asked the question, the communications person will still be the primary lead. The OPM would not come in and, and take charge of this advertising process for the bond, but they would definitely help out, you know, when required, if asked, based on, you know, specific tasks to Luke's point about, or, you know, whatever it is that we need to help move the process along. They'll help to keep us on task and make sure that that communications person is remaining on task more so than you know necessarily building the communications effort. It would still be someone else's primary charge. So does that answer your question? I I think the bottom line is the OPM is going to be a little bit out of the PR. You know, they're not gonna, the PR person is going to work more for the committee. The the OPM will also work for the committee, but they're going to be doing the day to day administration. And what we really need to build right now is capacity because we as working members in a community and we're all volunteering for this building committee effort, but we don't have the capacity to do some of the day-to-day -day tasks that are going to be required going forward. So the OPM will be our administrator really focused on the building projects, making sure that, you know, as we deal with our architects and engineers and other, other things that are going to hit us, um, pretty quickly that we can stay on top of things because um, you know we don't have capacity right now. As you, as you can see, right? If I had 
more capacity, I'd have a lot of things done right now. Um, but, you know, we all work for a living. So um, to that end, the OPM, uh, Alita has drafted that RFP. I've reviewed it. I, I have a few things to finish up. Phil, I'd like you to take a look at it, um, if you would. And then we also have to run it through the administration. I'd like John Anderson to take a quick look at it and do the normal RFP process, Craig, if that's good. And then we'd like to get it out soon because we want to uh, get it to market and, and get somebody, um, get some proposals back to consideration. So that'll be a process. Um, we expect a, probably a couple weeks after the RFP is issued. Um, and then we'll, we'll hopefully be able to select somebody in April that, that will be able to take the torch and, and lead the effort. It's less than ideal that we won't have answers on moving forward with the bond, right? But there's a very short, I, I would expect, and, and Lita can attest to this, I don't expect proposals to come back extraordinarily high for the first phase, meaning up to the bond vote. So even if we, we hire an OPM, even if we hold on awarding an OPM, we at least have them in place till we get an answer on, okay, we're gonna bring it to vote. Then we can kind of unleash the OPM if we decide it's prudent at that point. Because we are we've talked about this. We need to get an A and E team in sooner than later. So if we don't pull the trigger at some point in probably May, we're gonna be behind schedule. And that's that's where we're so so that hopefully answers your question. If somebody asks you why you're hiring an OPM, you don't know you're moving forward. Well, because we can't just wait around twiddle our thumbs for the next two months hoping that we can get a decision. Right, we got to keep keep moving. Um, so I want to thank Alita for her efforts on the RFP. Um, we'll continue to do the final tweaks. Once it goes to Phil, Alita, I'll pull you in again to take a look at the final copy, make any final tweaks, and then we'll get it over because this thing's overdue. So, does anybody have any questions on the OPM procurement or or what the OPM will do? Okay. Well, then we'll move on. Um, so I was gonna, I had put a topic on for the public outreach and communication initiative for potential presentation and discussion, because I wasn't sure if we'd have people ready lined up to give some sort of presentation to the committee. Truth is we don't, because we're still communicating with them and getting people on board. Does anybody else have ladybugs all over the place? I keep flying it. <laughs> the ladybugs in my uh, upstairs room are, something crazy. Um, so we won't have that presentation tonight, um, but I will entertain any other questions you have on the public outreach and communication under this agenda item, if anybody does, or input. No, that's fine, we'll move on. So I actually, we don't have a lot else. Um, uh, we're gonna schedule our next meeting. I wanna stay on the Tuesday tracks. It's okay to have a short meeting. Um, I promise. Uh, I think we're going to have plenty of meetings. They're going to be long and, and full of content. Right now, we're kind of just keeping the routine to ensure we're staying on track. We're communicating with the committee, making sure our, we're answering any questions that you have during this downtime. So um, with that, we have our next scheduled meeting. I'll entertain a motion to schedule our next meeting on March 23rd at 6 o'clock. Can I get a motion? So, so moved. Thank you, Jason. Can I get a second? Second. All right. Thank you, John. Um, Mr. Levis, can you give a roll call vote, please? Yes. <laughs> uh, Mr. Murray. Yes. Miss Hall. Mrs. Hall. Yeah. Yes. Ms. Anzalone. Yes. Mr. Coward. Yes, under protest, because that's my birthday. <laughs> we'll have cake. <laughs> All right, virtual cake is fine. Just, just put a cardboard we'll cutout there. We'll blow a kiss to you. We'll blow a kiss. Yes. Um, Dr. Dixon. Yes. Mr. D'Agostino. He's not really a He's on mute. OK. Um, I'm, I'm not a voting member. If I That's were, right. I That's would right. vote yes. That's right. You're not. <laughs> Neither am I. Miss, Mrs. Kennedy. Yes. Mrs. Shockley. Yes. 
Mr. Levesque. Yes. Mr. Lucian. Yes. Mr. Martin. I vote yes, and I think the meeting should go extra long on Don's birthday. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Ms. Patno. Uh, yes. Mr. Price. I second that, Jason. <laughs> Amen. Yes. And uh, Mr. Restall. Yes. Amy, where's your Christmas tree? I'm now, I now have flowers. Can't you see them? <laughs> it's spring. It's spring. <laughs> Man, you guys have been addicted. Poor, poor Don. <laughs> I well, think I we need a hard a hard stop at six thirty. I'm sorry. Do you know that he tortures us every day of the week? I'm getting that. I'm, yes. I'm getting. I'm picking yes. that up. So that uh, nice that, man tortures you. That nice nice man does that. Who are we even talking about? Sheep and wolf clothing. <laughs> You're not that gullible, Doctor Dixon. Come on. Wolf and sheep's uh, clothing. Sorry, Ron. Jeez, what are you doing to these people, Don? No comment. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Let's keep up the Tuesday meetings. If you have agenda items you'd like to put on or things to discuss, please reach out to me. And uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I make a motion make. to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. I second. Okay. Who, who's that second? Mr. Jason. Jason. It was Jason. All right. I'm going to do a, I have enough video on. We can do a uh, raise hand vote. I see all hands up of voting members. Jason, I'm assuming you're a yes. I'm a yes. Okay, All right. Thank you, sir. Everyone have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. You too. You too. Thank you, Luke. Good night. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Good night.